When did you last renew your upsell? It's episode 247, it's a Tuesday. It's a sunny November day still. I'm still here in Canada. I'm back down by the duck pond, by the golf course. Posh houses in the background. This is a nice area, by the way. No, I don't live here. I stay nearby. I live in England and Canada, a bit of both. I travel a bit because I do the stuff that I help you to do. I, I have a what's called a self-marketing company. I actually have a team, but we follow systems that it's taken me 30 something years to figure out that do the marketing for us. We don't employ salespeople. Our, uh, my team manages the system and creates more of it. But applying this stuff doesn't take long. And this is what we do. Part of it is, is what you sell and the way you sell it. And do you know what an upsell is? Uh, the best, when anyone talks about upsells, they always use McDonald's. So you walk into McDonald's, I don't know if they still do this, but you say, can I have a burger? They say, uh, would you like fries with that? And you say, yep. And there you were going to spend, who knows, $2, you're now spending three. When I go uh, in, in Canada, when I go into the Cineplex and go over um, to the popcorn thing, as soon as I step up to the popcorn thing, the young, the young lad or lady, uh, with their hand goes up to the board and say, can I interest you in a... <laughs> and no, never, ever, just the popcorn. But a lot of people must say yes, they make the effort. Do you? For example, if you are selling shoes in a shoe shop, when someone buys them, do you offer specialist cleaning products? Do you offer a spare pair of laces? Do you offer a cleaning cloth? Do you offer anything? I don't know what else there is. Do you offer insoles? Are they all being sold next to the till, next to the, red, the cash register? Do you think it's cheesy? The person can say no, but you can give them an offer. Quite often, uh, say, say for example, the pair of shoes cost $60. That specialist cleaning stuff is, is uh, say, $12. You pay uh, $5 for it. How about saying to them, as you bought a pair of shoes, we give $2 off a cleaning thing and you can have it for $10. You've, you've made another $5 if they buy it. You've upped your average sale from 60 to 70, or that sale anyway. Do you see how that works? So if, for example, you have a car wash service, it probably doesn't take you much longer to do the extras. Why not have a, have a day once a week where if you, uh, say your standard clean costs $10, um, the one with an interior wipe is $20, and the deluxe everything is $50. How about for on a Fridays, that deluxe one becomes $40 and the, the second one becomes $16, something like that. Even if people know, more people will come back when they think they're getting a deal. But in reality, you're just getting to clean their car and they're paying more than your standard $10 fee. You have to be looking at this in the right way. Okay, you're not just giving away a discount to somebody who was coming anyway. You might find that you're busier on Fridays. And by the way, I would obviously um, advise that you use the day you are least busy to offer those days. And you could do it every two weeks. If you have email addresses, you could, or text numbers, you could text message or email people to say, don't forget, the Friday special is coming. It's the third Friday in every month, something like that. You might get a queue of people, but so you don't offer, uh, on that day, they're generally gonna come and have the better quality, higher priced services. It doesn't take you twice as long or three times as long if you've priced it right.
Okay? There are many ways of doing this. If you are a consultant, how about uh, if you offer some kind of service, um, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head, but an audit, some kind of home valuation audit, and say, for example, it costs a hundred pounds. How about uh, for another 20 pounds, we'll give you the written report on CD and we'll email it to you, or 110 pounds or something like that. How about just offering something extra? Think to yourself, what would that cost to print out and put in a post? What would that cost to put onto a CD? Nothing. So remember, when you're doing an upsell, generally the upsell are not trying to double the price of the product, it's trying to add another 10% or another 20%. But um, it generally is something that's very profitable. Um, let me think, for example, in our fire protection business, we sell fire extinguishers. And the average fire extinguisher is, at our price, is probably 30 pounds maybe. But 90 something percent of our customers buy a little sign to fix above the extinguisher and that sign costs about three pounds. That makes our average uh, for the fire extinguisher about 33 pounds, about 10 percent more. Now we make a higher profit margin on that three pound item than on the rest. So it actually improves the average profit margin too. That's the way you should be thinking. Why do you think supermarkets put all the candies and the sweets Obviously not in the UK where we've caught up with the uh, 21st century and they don't do that anymore, but in all your other countries. Why do you think they put the sweets there? So that the kids who are bored say, well, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the mum or the dad just grabs uh, some candy, some sweets, throws it on the conveyor belt and adds it. That increases what they sell. Why do you think they have buy two, uh, three for the price of two? That increases. You don't need three, but you're going to buy them. It increases the amount of food we throw away, but it increases the amount you spend. You would have come back when you needed that second chicken, but you, uh, so when you bought two chickens for the price of, uh, sorry, three chickens for the price of two, you didn't, you only wanted one chicken, but you couldn't resist it because to get another one, they throw in one free. You don't need three, you're going to end up throwing one of them away. You, when you run out of chickens, you would have come and bought another chicken. But the supermarket has got it today. And the next time you come back, they're going to have it again and you're going to fall for it again. Check out your upsells. When was the last time you checked them to see what you're giving and if they can be improved and if it's still working? That is my advice to you today my friend okay today it's tuesday did mention that at the beginning it's time for a toolbox tip today is upwork now upwork.com is the new name for the combination of the the freelance sites elance and odesk now <clears throat> i was a big fan of elance wasn't so much a fan of odesk but a lot of my friends swear by it and it, it's the only reason i wasn't a fan is because I hadn't really used it much. I was quite happy with Freelancer and Elance. But because Freelancer.com is so large, I love Freelancer by the way, um, <coughs> Elance and Odesk, the second and third biggest, merged, still not as big as Freelancer, to become gigantic as well. And they changed the name to Upwork. Now it's based on the Odesk system. Oh, it's confusing. But uh, so you can't sign up anymore for Elance, but you can sign up at Upwork. It doesn't cost you anything to sign up. But the great thing is, unlike with a lot of other work, they have special systems for people to work for you by the hour. Now people will bid on work, they'll tell you their experience and they'll publish their hourly rate. Uh, so for example, I have a guy that works on our Rainmaker WordPress site. And he is in, if I remember, Bangladesh. Don't even know his first name, his uh, initials MD. But um, <coughs> he's great. Perfect English, absolutely perfect English, no misunderstandings at all. He's paid by the hour, he does the work. 
He diaries when he's working. He sets a system on Odesk to show he's working. It writes down exactly what he's done, the time he spent doing it. I can have screenshots of his computer to show he's not surfing the internet when he's working for me. These are taken at random. He cannot control them. It's great. I recommend you go check it out. So when you, so say the guy charges $20 an hour, you don't pay an extra for using it. They charge him a commission. Cool, eh? If it doesn't work out, they give you your money back. They always side with the person paying the bill because that's where they earn the money. I recommend it. Upwork.com. You can't go wrong. Dead easy. I think it works well on mobiles as well. I have a tip like that every single Tuesday. If you go to marketingforowners.com forward slash 71, we've got our 71 tools that we use every single day that's created over 105,000 customers for us without a single salesperson. Go get it. It's free. I'll see you tomorrow.